everyone, welcome back. Today, we're gonna have a bit of fun with the kickstand and the footrest. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's get our gizmo up and running and select the cylinder 3D from the gear. What we'll do next is unmask the bottom of the cylinder, use the gizmo to extrude, then scale it down on the X axis. Delete the middle edge loop, then alt tag the bottom faces and Q mesh. Next, we're going to add in the edge loop using the slice curve brush. Then we can use the gizmo to scale it out. We will unmask the front polys and move them back a bit. Let's continue the mask and make adjustments to the model. Now let's unmask the bottom polys and extrude with the gizmo. We'll put an edge loop right down the center. Alt tag these faces and cube mesh them back. Then unmask the bottom and just move it over slightly. Okay, let's add in another edge loop. Unmask those edges and move them out. Alt click on the model to orientate the gizmo. Let's go ahead and slice in a couple more edge loops. Then we can unmask the edges and move them back. Our next step is to Q-mesh those polys down. If you're having trouble with that, try approaching it from the side. To group the visible parts, just hit Ctrl W. Alt tag those two polys and let's Q-mesh them back. Finally, let's unmask the point and move it into place. Let's go ahead and press Ctrl W to group visible. Now we can delete that extra edge loop, unmask this edge loop and move it forward. We're going to grab our Move Infinite Depth Brush and tweak a few things. Then go ahead and select Bevel Edge Loop Complete and mask the top. Next up, select Q Mesh Single Poly and Alt Tag the two bottom polys. Now we can alt tag the three polys to Q-mesh. Unmask the top polys and move them into place. Time to grab the Move Infinite Depth Brush again to make some modifications. Slice in an edge loop and continue your tweaks with the Move Infinite Depth Brush. Slice in another edge loop and collapse the edges. Let's go ahead and delete the extra edges. Collapse the top edges next. Let's go ahead and give it a slice and delete the extra edges. Now we can slice in an edge loop. This will help us manage that curve when we turn on dynamic. 
collapse the edges on both sides, then press Ctrl W to group visible. Let's slice in another edge loop toward the front. Q-mesh those polys up and collapse the edges back. For added control over the curvature, we'll throw in another edge loop. Then slide the single edge and set the crease level to 3. Now grab your Z-Modeler brush and let's set up those creases. Turn off Dynamic for a moment and slide the edges over slightly. Unmask the edge and scale it on the x-axis. Add in more edge loops with the slice curve brush and adjust with the move infinite depth brush. Now according to the reference, it's a bit asymmetrical. Let's aim for that in our model. Press Ctrl W to group visible and then switch dynamic back on. To help control the front shape, add a couple of support loops. Unmask the edges and use the gizmo to create more of an arc. Let's drop the crease level down to 2. Slide those edges up just a bit to give them some more room to breathe. I did extrude the top polys and made a few adjustments, but the footage got a little wonky toward the end, so I cut it out during editing. This part is mostly about extruding edges and moving points. So instead of a play-by-play, -play, let's focus on a couple of really handy features. The first one we'll discuss is Adjust Last. This is a pretty neat feature that gives you some extra control over the last action you performed. So say you just sculpted a stroke onto your model and you realize that it's not quite right. Maybe it's a bit too strong or maybe it's too weak. Instead of undoing the stroke and trying again, you can use the Adjust Last to tweak the intensity of that last stroke. You'll find Adjust Last in the Stroke Palette. You can slide the Adjust Last slider left or right to decrease or increase the intensity of your last stroke. This gives you a way to quickly tweak your last action without having to undo or redo the stroke. Adjust Last can be a great tool for refining your sculpting and making sure every stroke is just right is like a little safety net for your sculpting process. There's another awesome feature I want to highlight, even though we haven't used it in this video series. It's called Bevel Pro. Bevel Pro in ZBrush is a powerful tool tailor-made for hard surface modeling. Let's say you're in the process of creating a hard surface model. You have these sharp edges and corners, right? They look pretty good, but there's something a bit off. They seem too perfect, almost artificial. 
This is where Bevel Pro really shines. It allows you to add a beveled edge to those razor sharp corners, giving your model a more realistic look. After all, most precision made objects have some routing on their edges due to the manufacturing process. With Bevel Pro, you have a lot of control over how the beveling process works based on how you set up your polygroups. You can play around with the depth and throw in some segments for a smoother transition. And the best part, Bevel Pro operates non-destructively, meaning you can tweak and adjust your bevels until they're just right without permanently altering your original mesh. So whether you're designing sleek tech gadgets, machinery, or robot armor, Bevel Pro is a great feature to have on your ZBrush toolkit for creating authentic, polished hard surface models. Next up is a tool I feel often gets overlooked, especially by those new to the ZBrush game. I'm talking about Decimation Master. Decimation Master is so important when it comes to managing the complexity of your ZBrush model. This plugin is primarily used to drastically reduce the polygon count of your model while maintaining high resolution detail. In the hard surface modeling world, you often have a detailed high poly mesh to capture all the intricate details, hard edges, and smooth surfaces that are characteristic of a mechanical or man-made objects. Now while ZBrush is pretty incredible in handling millions of polygons without breaking a sweat, other 3D softwares may not be as forgiving. These programs often have limitations on the polygon count they can handle effectively. That's where Decimation Master comes into play, acting as a bridge between ZBrush and other softwares. Decimation Master's genius lies in its approach of reducing polygon count. Instead of just uniformly downsizing the entire model, it operates on a much smarter level. The plugin selectively reduces polygons, retaining more polygons in areas where there's a lot of detail, and reducing polygons in flatter or smoother areas. This ensures that the overall appearance and the intricate details of the model are maintained as much as possible, which is crucial when you're working on detailed organic and hard surface models. So let's take a practical example. Imagine you're working on a complex mechanical part or a robotic character with tons of intricate parts and detailed surfaces. You've poured hours into sculpting these fine details creating a high poly work of art. But now, you need to get this model optimized for 3D printing, or maybe you want to export it into another software for retopo, or share the file with a coworker. In these scenarios, a high polygon count would be problematic. With Decimation Master, you can optimize your model's polygon count to meet the requirements of these other platforms without sacrificing the details you poured your heart into. You simply run the plugin, adjust the percentage of decimation you want, and let it do its magic. The end result, an optimized model that still looks like your original sculpt, but is much more manageable in terms of polygon count. In conclusion, Decimation Master is a powerful tool for any ZBrush artist. It provides a perfect balance between retaining high detail sculpted information and optimizing polygon count, ensuring that your model is ready for whatever lies ahead in your creative journey. Now let's switch back to the step-by-step -step process since we're past the repetitive stuff. Set the crease level to 2 and finish creasing the model. Instead of creasing these edges, we'll get more control by adding in edge loops. The pinch that's happening here can be sorted out by bridging the two points. It's sometimes better to create triangles than have surface deformations. Now we can add in an edge loop to tighten up the bevel. <laughs> 